You're listening to Life Repurposed with Michelle Rayburn, where you'll find uplifting and practical advice for everyday living, creative inspiration for do-it-yourself projects, and recommendations for books and resources that will encourage you to embrace your life repurposed. I'm your host, Michelle Rayburn. Welcome to episode number 21 of the Life Repurpose podcast and video. If you're following along on video today, you will see that for the first time I'm interviewing somebody live instead of by technology using Zoom. And I have Kathy Carlton Willis here. She's one of my dearest friends, flown all the way from Texas, not just for the podcast, but for some writing things that we've been doing with a group of writers we're in this week. So I'm going to have Kathy talk about how her life has been repurposed, how God has used her to turn trash into treasure. So I'm going to have Kathy introduce herself and then I'll ask her some questions. So welcome Kathy Carlton Willis. Thank you. And it's great to be with you all too. Just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in a little town called Louisiana, Missouri and just consider myself a Midwestern gal. So I love coming to Wisconsin. I miss that part of my upbringing really. (laughs) And uh, I've been in a life of ministry. My entire adult life. I married young and we surrendered to God's call when we were young and it's taken us to six different states and I just love what I do and now I get to minister to people like Michelle and others (laughs) who are here for my writing advice. I also coach in our church to small group leaders which I love that too. So it's just been a full life of ministry. I love it. So Kathy is the founder of a group called Word Girls, which is for mm-hmm. Christian writers, and I'm part of that group. Some of the people watching are now a part of that group, so I hope yes. you comment if you're watching this on Facebook. We'd love to have your comments just to say hello. Yes. Um, but if you'd like to know more about Word Girls, I am going to link up in the show notes, which is just a blog post at michellerayburn.com 21, and that will have links to Kathy's website. I will mention Word Girls there. So if you're curious and you're thinking, I've always wanted to be a writer, I want you to go there and check that out too. So Kathy, you are called, and this is a a label that has developed over years, but now this has become your identity really, is it? God's Grin Gal. Right. Tell us a little bit about why you're God's Grin Gal. Well, it's funny because I teach branding to other people, and I had a completely different brand emphasis (laughs) and, and tagline, but everywhere I went, people started saying, you're the gal that always grins. I don't know how you do it. You have so many different trials in your life and somehow you can still grin. It's not one of those fake grins that you put on just because you're concerned with how you look, but it truly is coming from inside. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it just sort of fell upon me that people kept saying that. And my first book was Grin With Grace. And that happened because I went through a terrible experience and someone (laughs) asked me, well, what did you do? Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know. I just grinned with grace. Mm -hmm. And so it just sort of stuck, I guess. And uh, I'm grateful that I'm, I get to have a joyful life mm-hmm. because I, I know that other people really struggle. So I'm not trying to be that annoying girl next door that is <laughs> always grinning when when someone else is going through a tough spot. I have mm-hmm. terrible times too. So mm-hmm. it's not that I just have a great life all the time. It's just learning to grin through those times. I hope that some of you are joining by video. And if you never have and you're listening in the car, <laughs> please go to YouTube or Facebook just so you can see Kathy grin because Aww. I feel like the video part is the fun part (laughs) and I know I'm a podcast listener too so a lot of the times I'm just in the car listening Mm -hmm. to audio but um yeah just have to see Kathy's grin Uh (laughs) because it's not artificial and that's what I love about Kathy Uh so you've told us how you came to be known as the grin gal what circumstances have you experienced Mm -hmm. in life that have really tested your faith and tested your grin right (laughs) and I know those of you listening also have those times in your lives that you're trying to figure out a way to see how God's going to redeem something that is has just been devastating to you. And, and for me, it started uh, when I was a teen girl discovering I was born without most of my reproductive mm. organs and I couldn't have children. And yet I was getting engaged to this wonderful man mm. and we had to refigure out what our life would look like without children. And so that was a huge thing for a young girl to have to go mm-hmm. through. And because of how God got me through that, I knew that he could get me through mm-hmm. anything. 
and and use it for other people's good too and his glory and that's always been my purpose mm -hmm. we have moved around a lot and to me that's a trial because I really mm -hmm. want to feel rooted somewhere yes. and so that has been a bit of a struggle mm -hmm. even though I try to figure out a way to be content wherever mm -hmm. we have lived uh, we've had some disappointing things happen in church and I so know some of you all have had mm -hmm. that too and and it's it's a hard time because I love the church and I love that we get to be Christ's body mm -hmm. uh, yet we're messed up people too right you we're, know? All, and, we're all broken we all need grace <laughs> yeah and and so those things have happened as well that have mm -hmm. tested my grin to make mm -hmm. sure if it's real mm -hmm. yeah so you've also had more than the average number of surgeries and hospitalizations mm -hmm. and can you think of a time when you were challenged by one of those where you felt like it was hard to keep the grin? Right. Well, I have had over 20 surgeries, and a lot of times I get whatever the worst case scenario mm -hmm. is, uh, or even something the doctor doesn't predict could happen. Mm -hmm. And so then I'm in the hospital <laughs> a lot longer than they anticipate. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the difficult thing for that is just when you are when you endure something that they don't even tell you could happen and you can't plan for mm -hmm. it and you all may not be dealing with a health struggle but it may be something else in your life that you right. just can't plan ahead for it and it happens anyway and so what do you do when that happens and you have I'm a goal oriented gal mm -hmm. and so it throws away all my goals for mm -hmm. that year <laughs> and it changes my direction and the thing I learned was it that didn't take God by surprise mm -hmm. And if he allowed it to happen, he can make something good out of it. Mm. And so that's been sort of my goal. Uh, I remember my last hospitalization, I was in for two weeks, and it was a situation where no one knew me yet, and mm -hmm. so I had no visitors, <laughs> and that was hard. But the staff at the hospital visited, mm. and God allowed my room to be the place they could come and have a safe haven and, and be kind of encouraged before mm -hmm. they went on their day. So even when you're in a bad situation, something really cool could happen from it. Yeah, that's great. But I know you're a planner because I know you personally. Mm -hmm. And I know you're not only a planner, but you're very organized and detailed mm -hmm. in your plans. So mm -hmm. um, for my listeners, if Kathy is putting together a seminar for writers, her details mm -hmm. are all organized ahead of time. Mm -hmm. She times things out well. She's not a speaker that goes over on her allotted time. So for a planner, mm -hmm. you said the plan, that life doesn't always go according to plan. Mm -hmm. So how do you cope with that? What emotions um, do you process or how do you cope when you are a planner and suddenly the plan is very different from what you expected? Right. Well, I've joked that I might need to write a book called The Plan B Girl because it seems like nothing goes according to plan, but yet it always turns out well. It does. It's sort of like that book you start reading and you think it's going down a certain mm -hmm. direction and all of a sudden it changes and it has a completely different ending, right. but it's a cool ending, right. you know? All of your endings have been cool. Yeah, and so um, I guess how do I cope with that or adjust yeah. is... Well, number one, I learn, I've learned i learned that I am replaceable. Mm. And so anything I have committed to do, even though I love to live up to my mm -hmm. commitments, there's always another way to mm -hmm. make it happen or it doesn't need to happen. Mm -hmm. Or it can happen later. Sometimes it's a delay, not mm -hmm. a no. And so mm -hmm. I'm learning that more and more. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm having to make myself learn to live in the moment mm -hmm. more. Yeah. And that's, a, that's hard for planners. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> yeah, you, you haven't even been able to publish the books on the timing you expected or planned because a hospitalization may have come in the middle of your really disciplined and focused writing time. Mm -hmm. So uh, making those changes, that's hard for me too. I have a really hard time shifting plan when I have one. So how is grinning and the kind of happiness and joy you talk about, how is that different from faking happiness. Right, and I really think it is because it comes from an internal mm -hmm. place, and it, it comes from the fact that I practice God's presence every mm -hmm. day, and so I know He's right there with mm -hmm. me. And when you have God's presence in your life, you feel like you can take on anything, mm -hmm. even the worst circumstances. <laughs> and so I think that really helps me develop a joy sensing that he is pleased mm -hmm. with me and as long as the, as that happens mm -hmm. then I can be pleased with my day 
And mm. so it really does come from a joyful place. Doesn't mean that I don't have stinky days. It's just that he's with me on those stinky days. Yeah. We can see through people like that, can't we? Oh, Where yeah. someone just puts on the fake happiness when you say... How is your day going? Oh, everything is just great. <laughs> right. And they're usually very flippant. Mm -hmm. And they usually minimize their struggles and everyone else's struggles. Mm -hmm. And that just doesn't honor the fact that we do have difficult days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So on social media, I, I like that you have a balance mm -hmm. of being real. Well, always being real. But mm -hmm. a balance of moments to celebrate and right. a balance of moments that you have been deep in prayer and really leaning into God. And mm -hmm. I think my listeners would appreciate that if mm -hmm. they uh, go to Facebook and follow you or some of your other Instagram, social media channels. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll have links to those too, because I would like you to connect with Kathy on social media. Some of you have connected with me and I've mm -hmm. not really shared very many of your posts. So mm -hmm. time to do that, I think, for me to share a post. So what I'd like you to do is stay tuned with us as we transition into talking about how Kathy's life has been repurposed because of what God has been doing. We're going to be talking about how God has repurposed Kathy's life. We've talked mm -hmm. about how things didn't always go according to plan. And so now I want Kathy to speak to the heart of somebody out there who's listening, who's saying, well, my life hasn't gone according to plan either. So what do I do? So what do you say to the listener who feels like she has lost her joy? Well, one thing that really helps me is to have a trusted companion that I can mm -hmm. confide in and express my struggle without them judging me mm -hmm. or making me feel less than in any way mm -hmm. and they will acknowledge that it's it is a difficult time but then they will help us help me remember who God is and, and they that person should do that for you mm -hmm. and really help you get through that time you shouldn't go through it alone mm -hmm. and the times when you do feel lonely I think those are the the worst times of all when you feel like you don't have any support or right. anyone that really understands and, and so I think it's important to reach out to someone who can be there mm -hmm. for you. So one of our temptations as that person, when someone reaches out to us, is sometimes to fix. Oh, I just, I've just i just fixed someone's problem today, <laughs> <laughs> so I totally get that. And at the very end of it, I put, I'm sorry, I'm a fixer. I did. Well, isn't that how it goes, though, when we're excited about how God has worked out something in us? Right. We long to see someone else experience that victory. Mm -hmm. So advice flows mm -hmm. sometimes. So how can we also show compassion and listening? What are some ways that people have supported you without fixing you? I think it's just the fact that they tell me that they have no idea what I'm going through. Because mm. one of the things we mess up is when we say, I understand completely, I've lived it. <laughs> it's like, no, you have not lived it. So it's almost uh -huh. better to say, I can't even imagine what right. you're going through. Right. And That's then good. say, that sounds really awful. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about how that is affecting mm. you today. Oh, that's a good, good question or a good statement to use. Mm hmm. hmm. So as you think about some of the things you've gone through, you can look back now and see where God's hand was in it. But when you were going through it, it probably was right. hard to see sometimes. But how has your life, how have you found purpose in your life because of the hardships that you've gone through? That's a great question. And, and really, some of the hardships have shaped my purpose mm -hmm. because I see how God had his hand on me during those times. And I think I can be that person for someone mm -hmm. else now to help them mm -hmm. have companionship or hope or joy in those times when they feel really um, desolate and, and separated from anyone that could have that for them. So mm -hmm. I think it's important to be real about what it feels like and what you're going through, but then also be real about how God can fill those spots and mm -hmm. make it okay and make it complete mm -hmm. again. When you started out writing, and we're going to be talking about Kathy's books at, in a few minutes, so stay tuned for that. But when you started out, did are you writing about the things you thought you would be writing about when you first started out? <laughs> well, you tend to live what you write about. And so I would love to write about um, 30 days around the world, eating gourmet meals every day and losing 30 pounds. I mean, seriously, if I could sign up for that, that would be what I would want to sign Me up too. for. <laughs> But instead, it seems like I'm getting signed up for things like one of the books that I'm writing is Your Life on Hold. Mm. Don't hate the weight. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what you mm -hmm. need to go through to write that book? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it does shape what I write and what I speak on and, and what I get invited to speak on mm -hmm. because they've seen me live it in my everyday life. 
Yeah, so Grin with Grace is one of Kathy's mm-hmm. titles, and I mm-hmm. think you've had plenty of opportunities <laughs> in your life to have to show grace. Definitely. And I say have to because sometimes it isn't what we want to do. Mm-hmm. True. Um, I've, there are times when I use the expression, I get to, but there are times when we have to. Right. It's just, we have to choose to do the hard thing. Mm-hmm. So um, Kathy's life has not all been easy, and people who see the outside and observe your joy might mistakenly believe that God gave you an easy life (laughs) so that you would have a smile. (laughs) She's laughing because of that. Um, Can you think of the most fun you've ever had during a difficult season? Wow. (laughs) Oh, that's a good... I didn't give Kathy the questions ahead of time, so if you can't answer... we The most fun I've ever had during during a a difficult difficult season. season... I would say it was when I wrote Grin with Grace, I wrote the entire book at a coffee house because my husband was home during that whole time and it was difficult to write at home and we were going through some awful stuff. Mm. He was unemployed. We were on food stamps Mm. and it was a difficult time Mm -hmm. for us. But it was the highlight of my day to go to the coffee (laughs) house and write the book and I'm living it and I'm writing it. And it became a really joyful time. So I would say that one. Yeah, see, that's what I want my listeners to hear because we think we need giant joy moments Mm -hmm. and that somehow redeems the difficulty. And yet here, Kathy is explaining how she sees little moments in the middle of a difficult season. And so there may be something that brings us joy in the everyday that helps us to get through that season. And so the little grins are just as important as the, <laughs> the little big grins. ones. I'm going to remember that, the little G grin. <laughs> the little grins. <laughs> so how does someone discover joy when it's overshadowed by pain, whether it's emotional pain or physical pain? Uh, how, do, how do they discover joy in the everyday moments then? The way that I do that, and I've had over 20 surgeries. I've had emotional pain too, so I can address both of those. For me, it's to try to get the focus off of myself. Mm. And whenever I have other people on my radar, I realize they're also going through difficult Mm -hmm. times. Um, We just went through where I live, Imelda, which Mm -hmm. was a tropical storm. And even though it was awful for me, it was more awful Mm. for someone else. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes getting my eyes off of myself really helps. When Mm. I start serving someone else, um, my pain diminishes. Mm. Uh, it catches up with me at night because that's when, mm-hmm. when I haven't been quote on, mm-hmm. you know, for the day. But uh, it really helps me to just have God mm-hmm. on my radar and other people on my radar, and to have His blessings on my mm-hmm. radar too. Even walking in nature, seeing things that uplifts yeah. me during a bad day. So it's really what you have your perspective mm-hmm. is what helps inform your joy. I have found too that as a speaker, there have been times I I'm gone speaking somewhere and I wake up with a headache that morning. And if I was home, I would think this is a couch day. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you know, I'm with I'm contracted to speak, so um, I have found that when I get going, it disappears. It does. And it I might even realize later I still have it. But mm-hmm. there is something about serving where it does take my focus to a different place. Mm-hmm. Um, for some of you at home, you might be in everyday circumstances, whether it's a caregiving or being a mom with your kids, or maybe you are facing unemployment. Uh, there could be so many different reasons. Right. But I encourage you to look for those little ways too that you can serve somebody else and find joy in doing that. Not that we want you to give, 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 to the point where you exhaust yourself because we both know that's not healthy either. (laughs) But to just look for little ways that you can pull the focus off of yourself and Mm -hmm. onto somebody else. And I also want to say that I think it's important for us to know when to ask for help. Yes. So if we need the focus to be on us, it's Mm -hmm. not wrong for us to tell somebody, I, I, I can't do that thing you're asking me to do, or I, I need someone to bring me a meal, or right. I need someone to just sit with me, to know that it's okay. Mm-hmm. I think more of us play victim, or maybe, um, I don't know what would be a better word, not victim, but um, martyr maybe, right. where we just press on mm-hmm. and don't pause. Right. Yeah. And I've learned I am a very finite being, very limited (laughs) with what I can do. And Mm -hmm. I have to be more realistic about it. 
And so that's exactly right. I remember after one of my surgeries asking the church if I qualified for their meal ministry <laughs> because I really needed it. Right. I didn't have family nearby. I didn't have that many friends outside of church. Mm -hmm. And it was really something I needed to do. So you're right. We need to acknowledge our limitations, ask for help when we need it, um, kind of tone down the schedule when we need to rest. Mm -hmm. I'm here at a retreat right now because I know I need to rest before mm -hmm. I go back home. Mm -hmm. that's so that's good. important. Yes, very much. Um, what is, this is my last question here and then we're gonna talk about your book, but what is your most recent opportunity to grin and grow? Only the ones that you can share publicly. Whoa. <laughs> we don't have enough time for that. <laughs> I would say for me, the one that keeps coming up is when I'm misunderstood by someone. Oh. And I know you all out there have had that happen mm -hmm. too, where you had your best intentions mm -hmm. in mind and you put your heart on your sleeve mm -hmm. and then someone misunderstood mm -hmm. it. And uh, it, it disappoints me because I thought that person knew me better mm -hmm. and it makes me reevaluate our relationship as a whole. Mm -hmm. and, and so those would be the biggest struggles, but how can I grin through it? It's knowing that either that person will or will not be a great relationship in the future, mm -hmm. but either way, God is a great relationship, oh, you know? And so I keep going back to him that mm -hmm. um, that's where I need to make sure I know I have that unconditional love mm -hmm. and he does understand. And um, I hate it when someone misunderstands me. Yeah. Though. Yeah, me too. It's it, it just gets you right in the mm -hmm. heart, so mm -hmm. that is hard. Well, I appreciate Kathy sharing from her heart. I'd like you to stay tuned for a few more minutes as we talk about Kathy's book that she already, books that she has mm -hmm. out, and also upcoming projects. So stay with us. Welcome back for our final segment of episode number 21. Kathy Carlton Willis is with us and I'm going to be linking in the show notes to kathycarltonwillis.com mm -hmm. and some specific pages there. Kathy is an author. She has a book for speakers. She also has Grin with Grace, which she has here to show if you're watching video. If you aren't watching video, you'll find the link on my website, michellerayburn.com slash 21. And this is a Bible study for women. Mm -hmm. Kathy has more coming out. What one is coming up after Grin with Grace? The next one will be the Grin Gal's Guide to Joy. And I, that's going to be one of my cornerstone books, I think, because it's just so real in my life. Um, all of my books that are Bible studies, I make sure I lead a Bible study through mm -hmm. it first so that it, I know it works in group. Right. I think that's really important. And so I write like a Bible study leader would write mm -hmm. a group. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about Grin with Grace for people who are looking for materials for their small group. Right, so there's Grin with Grace in the in each section, and that is the stories and just the lighthearted things because mm -hmm. I also do like to bring a grin or at least make your heart grin. You know, mm -hmm. some of them aren't big face grins. They're just heartwarming. Sure. And then there's uh, Grow with Grace, which is the Bible study part. And there's also Go with Grace and Give with Grace. And those are the activities that we do and then the way we pass it on to other people. So that mm -hmm. we're not just... Some of the Bible studies make me think mm -hmm. and they make me learn, but they don't challenge me to put it mm -hmm. into practice. Yeah. So this book really takes it that step further. And then at the each of end of each chapter it has a question mm -hmm. so you have to think what if this happened to me how would i respond with grace okay and then there's help for leaders in there too right so if you're looking to lead a small group you'll find the leader's guide in there are the videos still available yes i i was able to record a dvd for that and that will be available um it's on amazon on amg and on cbn okay C no not cbn um christian book christian book yes so we'll link to that on the podcast show notes and that way people can find that link from you if they want to get the book. The other book that Kathy has is The Ultimate Speaker's Guide, mm -hmm. which gives a lot of practical information for people who are looking to either start some kind of speaking, well, it could be ministry, it could be public speaking, mm -hmm. um, 
It could be pastors who are even prepping sermons and looking for something new. If you're already a speaker, there's all kinds of practical information there too for you to grow the business side. So anything else you'd like to tell us about the Ultimate Speaker's Guide? Well, I just find myself equipping other speakers. I've had the background Mm -hmm. training, and so I get invited to conferences speaking on it, and I felt like I had the materials to put together. I'm also a columnist for Christian Communicators. Yeah, that's right. I've been their speaker columnist for years, Mm -hmm. and uh, the editor there was gracious enough to say use this material add to it and make mm-hmm. your own book and so that's what I've done mm-hmm. I, I think it's it's so helpful for people who don't know where to begin mm-hmm. or who um, haven't had the opportunity to go to a conference True. it's really a conference it in really a book <laughs> just someone called it a textbook I don't yeah, know it's sort of like that yeah. but not with the academic Feel. Right. You're still going to get the grin gal. In yeah. The book. Still practical yeah. every day. So, yes. Right. Is there anything else you'd like to leave with our listeners before we sign off? I just want to encourage you it, if you're listening to this and it's a day where it's hard for you to grin, to just know that whatever spot you find yourself in, that God loves you and it, you aren't alone, even though I know it could feel that way. Mm-hmm. And I just pray that you will tap into that source of joy that you can have. Mm-hmm. And on the days when you're having a great day, maybe share that with someone mm-hmm. else. Excellent. Well, thank you, Kathy, for being here in person. This is so much fun. Uh, Tune in next time as I have another guest author who is going to be back with us for a second time. Uh, Find us, find Kathy on social media in the show notes. If you haven't followed Life Repurposed, I'll give you links to that in the show notes as well. I would also love to have people rate and review on iTunes or Google Play or Spotify if you're a listener. So please do that because it helps me to know that you're out there and it also helps me to figure out what kinds of things you're looking for on future episodes. So thank you and have a great day from both of us. (laughs) You've been listening to Life Repurposed with Michelle Rayburn. Check out tips, resources, and inspiration at michellerayburn.com.